guys, it's Katie, and I am so excited to be sharing an updated version of my weight loss story. So many of you know that about three years ago when I started my YouTube channel, I shared this story, but there has been so much that has changed since then. At that time, my YouTube channel was like kind of a hobby. There was maybe like 300 of us here, and now there's over 300,000. So I wanna make sure that I'm sharing all those updates with you guys. And for those of you that don't know me or love Sweat Fitness, you can get to know me a little bit better and hear how I lost 45 pounds. I still get questions every single day about how I lost that weight and how I keep it off. So just for those of you that don't know, when I started this journey, I was at the heaviest I had ever been on my five foot, about five, six, five, six on a like nice posture day. I was 168. I lost 45 pounds and now I sit really happy, healthy right around 128. And I know how frustrating and how discouraging it can be when you try and try and try to lose the weight and try to change your habits and try to make healthy changes and you don't feel like you get anywhere and you're spinning your wheels because I've been there. And hopefully hearing my story, knowing a little bit more about how I got there, what I did and how I've been able to maintain that weight loss for the last seven years basically, will really help encourage you to take the first step because this could be your story too. So I think for me, the very first time I ever became aware of my body and body image and weight was about third grade. That's when I started feeling like a little bit different than my friends. Maybe I was a little bit chubbier um, and that even like came into your head. And now looking back, it's so strange, especially when you look at old photos because you look at them, you're like, you're just a cute kid. Like there's nothing wrong with you. But at that time, as you start hearing things, it can really, really have a negative impact on your life. And those stories that you start telling yourself at that young age do carry with you through time. So by about fifth or sixth grade, that's when my body started changing. That's when I got my periods, when I started growing a chest and it was crazy because I was the only one in my class and I had like one other friend that we just like started developing so young. And that's when that self-consciousness really started to creep in and I started really comparing myself to those around me. My body was changing like crazy. I had, you know, extra chub places and love places that I hadn't before and I looked around and watched my friends and I struggled with what they were doing and eating and being able to, you know, like have snacks and ice cream and stuff. And I started at that very young age questioning if I could or should and feeling guilty when I did because I felt like I was gonna gain weight and that's when those diets and those really unhealthy habits and relationship with food kind of started for me. Fast forward to high school, dieting was totally normal. I mean, I had started so much younger too, but that's when everyone was doing it. And so that's where all of those fad diets started to really creep into my daily life. And I was doing Atkins and South Beach and coffee diets and taking different like pills and things that like I absolutely had no business doing at that time. And then in college, it got worse and worse and worse as I had more access to be able to buy diet pills and fat burners. Um, I was binging. I would go all day without eating and then binge out at night. And it was horrible horrible and I was destroying my body and I knew it and I felt not only physically sick a lot of the time um, but I also felt mentally unhappy and started dealing with little bouts of depression and feeling absolutely like not like myself and I didn't love who I was and I knew the things I was doing weren't healthy for my body and they weren't healthy for my mind but I didn't know how to stop and I felt like my only goal in life at that time was to lose weight and to be skinny so I could feel better about myself so I could have more confidence um, and like just increase my self-esteem. And I was looking for it in all the wrong places and doing it all the wrong ways. And even when I did think I was like making healthy choices, like working out a lot or eating healthier foods, I was like restricting my body so intensely that I would drop weight drastically, but then I'd be sick and it would only last for the short period of time. So then I'd have to start eating again and then I'd go to the opposite. So I was constantly fluctuating back and forth and could never figure out where that healthy balance was. And in case I wasn't already kind of a hot mess at this point in my life, I had dated someone for years and years, got cheated on, got dumped, graduated from school and had no idea what I was gonna do after college. Um, I felt at a complete loss. Like, I felt like everything about my life, my body physically, my insides were just off um, and I was living at home and I had a day where I just had the biggest like blowout of my life with my dad who's the kindest man in the whole world and I think that was very eye-opening people always ask like what was the moment that created change what was the moment that 
allowed you to like look at yourself and realize like you really need to do something different and make that change. And that was the moment for me because I realized how ugly my heart was at that time and how much all of my actions and things and ways I was reacting to people was because I was not happy with myself. And it wasn't just about my physical body. I knew it was so much deeper than that. And that was the moment that I needed to change. So I took a lot of time to do a lot of like in-depth self-reflection and started with trying to get my mind right and trying to change how I thought about myself, what I thought about my body, um, changing my body image, trying to improve my confidence. And it really all came down to me having to change my why. And I talk to you girls about this all the time, but finding your reason and your why you're doing what you're doing is so important because if you're only focused and your only reason is because you want to lose weight and you want to be a smaller size and you want to look better in clothes, it's not going to last because that's not enough. It's not important enough to us as humans to carry that on over time. So for me, I got to the point where I, my why became no longer what it had been for years that I was like doing everything wrong, which was to be skinnier. I changed it. My focus became to feel good and treat my body the way it deserved to be treated because I had destroyed it for years. All of those diets jack up your metabolism, the pills, everything else destroys your body on the inside, but it also affects, like I said, your mental and emotional state too. So I switched my why. My focus solely became on feeling better from the inside out. And I had to accept that my body might never change. And that's a very hard thing, guys. I know how hard it is to like accept who you are, where you're at right in this moment when you don't feel pretty, you don't feel confident, you don't feel good about yourself. But you have to know that you have a beautiful body that deserves to be loved and cherished. And you have to accept yourself first before you can make any of those changes, especially in a healthy, lasting way. So when I finally got over myself, over feeling like I wanted to be this certain size or anything else, yeah, I weighed myself at that time because I had like, I knew that my health was number one and I wanted to see where I was at. So I had like kind of a gauge and somewhere that I could see where I wanted to go, but it wasn't about setting a goal for a certain amount of weight loss. I just needed to make small changes and I knew that it started with what I was eating and with moving my body. And those were the two things I wanted to focus on. But I knew that I couldn't do what I did before, which was eat sugar-free, fat-free, um, or not eat all day, eat totally processed junk that like just made me feel icky all the time and messed up my stomach. I knew I needed to be different. Um, along with this, a lot of you guys know I have hypothyroidism and I've done some videos on that. So if you haven't seen them yet, go check them out. There's a lot of great information in there too and how that affected my weight loss journey. But all of that, there's so many hormones that are happening and like mental things that are going on. And so it's really important that you take that time to like step back and care for yourself first. Um, and so foods were something that were really important to me because I knew that they also affected my thyroid function. So I had to start really paying attention to how foods made me feel when I ate them. Um, I never made big drastic changes during this time, like as far as like restricting myself from stuff because that's what I did for all those years that never worked. So instead, I just was more like aware of how things impacted the way I felt. So I worked at a wine bar during this time and I knew that when I drank four glasses of wine, aka a whole bottle with my friends that at night, I felt crappy the next day. But instead of being like, I'm never doing it again, I made some modifications. So I drink a glass of wine, you know, just like a reasonable amount. And I knew when I ate tons of cheese and bread and everything else, I didn't feel good or I was sluggish or slow or had physical things happen with my body where I wasn't like able to process the food well. So I knew I needed to like cut down on certain things and increase more vegetables. And those are the steps that I started taking each day. I really didn't know exactly what to do at the time. I just knew what didn't work. And so I tried to find new things to bring into that. I didn't have a gym membership. I was fresh out of college. I had like a very like low salary paying job and I didn't really have any like equipment and I knew nothing really about working out except like running because that's the only thing I ever really knew how to do. And so I used the only thing I had as my equipment, which is my body. And it is the most amazing piece of equipment you could ever own and it's yours and you have everything that you need inside of you already to be able to make these changes happen. So like your body, that's why all of the Love Sweat Fitness workouts can be done without equipment. Like, of course, like if you have weights or booty bands, like they really take it next level. But you guys, when I started out, all I used was this and that's all you need. And it's taking one step at a time and setting those small micro goals, which was my biggest thing. Bef before everything was like, 
I'm gonna lose 20 pounds. And you never reach that goal because it's so big and it's so hard to figure out how to get there. And when you don't get there right away, you get discouraged. And I know that feeling, I know that pain. I know the frustration that comes when you don't see immediate change and satisfaction happening. And so for me, it was about just setting little goals. Like this week, I wanna move my body four days. And I would do it and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of myself, I feel better, and I did that. And so setting those smaller micro goals, goals over time really allow you to celebrate, see changes happening, feel them happening on the inside, and continue to go. And that becomes such a huge motivator to keep doing it week after week. So it's not just a two week like all out crazy thing that exhausts you and frustrates you and then you get over it. So I tracked what I ate, I tracked how it made me feel. I started just moving my body as much as I could and really through that as those steps started happening day after day and week after week, I started creating this plan for myself based on what was happening in my body. And I knew changes were happening, but I did not weigh myself this entire time, which people look at me and they're like, that's crazy because I had, I was so obsessed with the scale before. I weighed myself almost every single day up until this point. But during this transformation, I chose not to weigh myself because I knew if I weighed myself and if I had lost weight, I would be like, okay, cool, I'm good. And then I'd stop. So I didn't want it to be about that. But I tracked everything else. I tracked how I was feeling. I tracked you know, if I could only do one mile on a jog the week before and now I went a little further, that was exciting and that was progress to me. And that's where I really focused on. Even when people would tell me, oh, you look like you've lost some weight, you're looking good. Like I had to like, tune that out and I would say thank you and kind of move along because I didn't want to pay attention to the weight part of it. I just wanted to continue doing it and I knew again, if I had other people telling me I was lo looking good and losing weight, then I'd be like, okay, I'm good, cool but I wanted to keep my focus where it needed to be, which was on feeling good and making long lasting changes. It took me about two or three months until I really got into this habit and really like felt like I had had this plan that I created. And you know, I did so much research because as I told you, like in the beginning, I didn't know where, like what to do. I had done cross country a little bit. I kind of played sports on and off like throughout my childhood, but never really stuck with them. So I was kind of at a complete loss and totally self-educated during this process doing the research, seeing how I felt and constantly challenging myself. But about like three or four months, I was like in this pattern of three or four days a week, I would either go for a walk or a jog or maybe a yoga class. A lot of you guys know, like I fell in love with yoga during this time and that really like helped give me that mental clarity I needed to. And then I would do exercises at home, just like in my room. And those are a lot of the exercises you guys see now in the Hot Body Sweat Guide because they like seriously changed my body and it's just stuff that you do like with your own body. You don't need anything else but the changes that they can make and the way that they make you feel is so strong and powerful. So I was like all of a sudden going from this girl who never worked out consistently to being someone who was doing something every day basically. And it was crazy and it wasn't this long like, I'm gonna sweat it out for an hour, like intense workout regimen. It was just like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but it's the consistency that truly made that difference. Showing up every single day, doing something to move my body, to feel good. And even going back to that thyroid stuff, you guys, I felt so much different and my functionality was so different as I was eating those foods that were nourishing me and making me feel good and giving me energy and as I was moving my body all the time. So a lot of you guys have asked like, how long did it take you to lose that weight? And it was at about the six month-ish mark that I weighed myself for the first time during all of this because it really actually happened. So I had met Ryan during this process. I actually met him when I was at my heaviest and it was the coolest thing ever because I had finally started to gain this new confidence and new self-esteem and loving myself and I hadn't even really lost weight yet but I was making those steps and doing the things that just were making me feel better. And I think that that confidence innately grows in you and kind of exudes out of you as you're taking care of your body. It's amazing. And so I met him during that time. Um, and it was really neat because not only did I like love myself just the way I was, which I never thought I'd be able to say that, but I did. But then someone else saw me for who I was and loved me and cherished me. And, so Ryan was like my person during this journey and he wasn't into fitness or anything when we, when I first started this either, but like we did it together. And the one thing I do wish I would have had, like, while well, like I loved having him a part of that, but like I didn't have a community. I wasn't like social media. I wasn't on social media a ton. 
I didn't have friends around me that supported me that were like on the same page as me trying to make healthy changes. In fact, like we've talked about this a lot on Instagram, but I had like relationships that fell apart during this time because people couldn't handle me making those changes. And it was so weird. And it was like such a hard thing to deal with as you go through it. Looking back, it's still bizarre, but I understand it a little more. But when you make changes, even though it has nothing to do with the people around you, it oftentimes makes them uncomfortable because it either makes them feel guilty for not making those changes on their own or feel bad because they're not able to do it. I've been there. I watched people make changes around me that I was like, why can't, why can't that be me? And it's frustrating. Um, or they got mad because they didn't want to go out and party all the time and like get like late night burritos and shots and you know, all that kind of stuff. And so the relationships kind of fell apart and that was really hard. So I so wish I would have had a community like Love Sweat Fitness at that time to have that support, have that encouragement on the days that like kind of suck and you feel just like worn out and discouraged and on the days that you're like feeling yourself and want to celebrate. And that's why I just feel so blessed that I've been able to like have the story, which I never thought I'd have because it's been able to bring more and more people together and help more people. And at the end of the day, like if I can help one girl, just, just even one, let alone like hundreds of thousands of you avoid the pain and the frustration and all of the emotional and physical like trauma that I put my body through, I feel so blessed to do that. Like that is what makes me happier than anything in the world. Anyways, I never thought I would have a weight loss story. I never thought I'd be sitting right here where I am sharing my journey with you, sharing the encouragement, inspiration, hopefully to help you take that first step. And I think that's the coolest thing. Like, I mean, you guys ask me all the time with my before pictures, like, you know, there's those ones where I don't have a face in them. And because at that time, like I didn't plan on sharing the story with anyone. And to be honest, I didn't think I'd actually have one. I thought I was going to fail like I did every other time. And that sounds horrible, but that's the truth. And so I was sad and depressed and I like those photos were for no one but myself. But now I wish so badly that I had my face in them and I wish that I was smiling because that was the moment that everything changed for me. Making my mom take that picture of me was intended to help encourage me to remind me every day that I needed to keep doing it. And that's where everything changed. And so that's why I always tell you girls when you take your before photos, smile because that could be the moment that changes your life. That could be the start of your story. You could be sitting right here inspiring and sharing it with other women. And I want you to know like that is so possible. I had no idea. I would never have thought it, but it is. And so if I can give you any advice, it is to take that photo, to smile and to know that you absolutely have everything you need to make the changes that you are trying to make. I think now being in this position, one of the most frustrating things is still hearing people pushing different diets and extreme measures and saying you have to like lift weights, you have to be in the gym, or you have to spend two hours a day, or you have to work out seven days a week to see results when it's just not the case. It's not true, it's not what I did. I lost 45 pounds and I've continued to strengthen and tone my body over these years. And honestly, like I know that it's not always easy it's definitely not always easy. There's hard days and I still have hard days. There is moments where I don't feel like doing it, but then I go check the TML stuff hashtag and you guys like totally inspire me and I get back on it. It's to become a lifestyle for me where I know how I feel when I miss a day and it's not good. And so when I am eating well and I'm exercising on the regular and moving my body, I feel good. But I know it's not always easy, but it is really simple. If you have a clear plan, like that is why I wrote these plans, you guys. Like. I wanted to help every single one of you have that clear plan and show you just how easy it can be to make real lasting changes. With that clear plan and with a community there to support you and encourage you, you absolutely can make those changes too. I know it can be hard, I know it can be frustrating and if you feel like you've been like trying and trying and getting nowhere, I totally get it and I want you to know I am here for you girlfriend. If you have questions about my journey, if you're feeling frustrated, you need that support and that motivation, like Team LSF has got your back. I just wanna be here to support you so you do not have to go through all of those things that I went through before. So comment below, ask any questions you guys have. If you feel like this was helpful, sweat the thumbs up and make sure you come follow on Instagram at Love Sweat Fitness. I love you guys so much, so, 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 so much. So don't forget, good things come to those who sweat. And I'll see you guys next week for another awesome workout. Bye.